so we're about two hours down the road from leaving the north uh, entrance of Yellowstone. We went through Bozeman, Montana, and we're at around Three Forks right now. And Marianne found a harvest house, because we were talking about going to a restaurant, having something to eat and a beer. Marianne found a harvest house called Bridger... Bridger Brewing. Brewing. The they got a pub and grill. grill. They got tons of parking. So, uh, yeah, we're going to shut her down a little bit early. I don't know what it is, 4.30 maybe or something. And uh, we're going to check this place out. Perfect, thank you. We got food. I have a cheesesteak that looks pretty loaded. The last one I had, I forget where that even was, I had a cheesesteak. It wasn't that long ago. No there was hardly anything in it. This one's jammed. And I got a pub burger. It's like a double patty full of yummy goodness. And fries and a beer. So Marianne says... That was probably the best burger I've ever had. That's it is so good. That's a tall statement. I haven't even tried mine yet. <laughs> That's pretty good cheesesteak. It's got a lot of meat. <laughs> Stretchy cheese. It is so good. That's pretty good. Mm. Good morning, everybody. We are heading out early this morning. We just made a coffee and hit the road. We were in Wheat, Montana and we're headed we're doing interstate today we're going to put on some miles and get through montana um but check out this sun i don't know if you guys can see it very well but it's like the super reddest sun i've seen in a long time from all the smoke from the forest fires i'm guessing so let's put on some miles good morning hey guys we're on the road with some big updates. Uh, a week ago ish, we left Yellowstone. Um, and at the time, we were making tracks towards Glacier National Park. Our plan was to go through Glacier National Park and then up into Alberta and then loop around up north in Alberta, over to BC, and then back down. Yeah. But then... But then a couple of hours into Montana, uh, when we had sort of stopped for the night, we got a phone call that said that we were needed um, in BC to suite, basically to just to deal with a, a family matter. Um, so change plans we got up the next morning and made our way to uh to kamloops british columbia it was a 15 hour drive pretty much just blasted through uh, montana idaho part of washington state um it's really pretty we'll have to go back and spend some some time in all those states because yeah, a lot of very varying pretty. terrain in washington which yeah. we did take some video of that too and um very similar to arizona where you're in desert and then in uh you know pine forest when you go up and it just changes lots yeah it was yeah. really pretty and in montana was really pretty too but there was a ton of forest fires um in the area Stretch. at the time so all the mountains were covered in smoke and so we didn't really get to see everything too clearly. Um, but yeah, so... Crossed the Osoyos and went up uh, through, where'd we go through? We went Osoyos to uh, Princeton and then Princeton Merit. to Merritt. Yes. And Merritt into Kamloops. Hello. 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 Hey, Good. You want to get a yellow cap or two? Or? Well, that'd be nice. Oh, it's got a yellow stripe it's on it. Yeah, stripe. we put a yellow stripe on <laughs> yeah, it to make it match cool. a little bit. I was like, this is really cool. I can see when you got to roll it up. We're hard to miss. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You don't lose it in a parking lot. No, that's what yeah. I always say. <laughs> um, Some pretty nice country in there. Really a little nice. bit of it was getting dark, so yeah. we didn't get to see as much as we wanted to see, even though that 
back road or not back road but it's just, the smaller road from Princeton to Merritt seemed pretty nice really pretty and lots all. of 60 kilometer an hour yeah. corners but it was getting dark so we didn't get a lot of scenery there but I think that seemed like a pretty nice highway it's really pretty all through the Samokameen um, wine country really really pretty so yeah we didn't really get a chance to explore that too too much but we'll just save it for the list for next time so we spent a week in Kamloops just with family. And um, yes, so then we hit the road. Good morning, everyone. We are hitting the road today. We're parked just alongside the Thompson River here in Kamloops. We were able to park up at uh, Mary Ann Cousin Becky's place, park in her driveway, and uh, did a bunch of visiting. But we're heading north in British Columbia today. First stop on our trip north, taco stands, <laughs> Cache Creek, BC. And uh, we hear these are the best tacos around, as good as Mexico. But hey, we'll have some here, and then we'll have some in Mexico, and we'll let you know how good the Desert Hills taco stand really is. This is a happening place. Sorry? Yeah, busy. Perfect. Good. Thank you so Thank much. You. Enjoy your lunch, okay? Thank you. Thank you. So we got our tacos and we need to load up with sauce and stuff. Sensible portions only for your tacos. So you can't just eat a plate with toppings. They look pretty good. I got a pork belly taco and a burria. Burria, yeah. <laughs> Which was a shredded beef, I think. Yeah. And I got a burria and a um, pork taco. Just a regular pork taco. Yeah. Pork belly taco. That's where it's at. So we made it a minute down the road. We stopped again because <laughs> there's a fruit stand. A market. A fruit it's like market. A fruit stand and a market with artesian breads and all kinds of good stuff and pumpkin patch and a corn maze. Is making bread an art now? It is when they're fancy. Mm. Corsting's fruit market. They have a lemonade stand. Supposedly they have cinnamon buns. I might need a cinnamon bun after that taco because I haven't got away from Eating traveling food, food yet, yet. <laughs> and I gotta smarten up soon but one more cinnamon. What'd you get? Apples. Apples. Oh it smells so good in here. Whoa. <laughs> I only want one. I think we need to share. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's the one. Okay, I want a peanut butter chocolate one then if you're getting one. Peanut butter chocolate one as well. Gotta keep it fair. So, we're in, we're out. Cuts we got lots goods. of stuff. Cuts the kids. <laughs> so we got all the fuel. We're ready to ride. Put on some miles and head towards Prince George. And it's about four, a little over 400 kilometers, 450-ish to Prince George from here. Yeah. from Cache Creek and um, we don't know how far we're gonna go maybe we'll be feeling it and we'll go all the way maybe we won't time will tell maybe we'll just eat all this food and then we'll have a nap then we'll have a nap <laughs> so we're doing our initial loop in reverse so as Gord was saying originally we were gonna go into Alberta and then into BC so now that we're here in BC, we are headed towards Prince George, which is my hometown. Um, quick little stop, I think, probably just uh, a night or two. And I, I get to meet Mr. PG. You get to meet Mr. PG. Never Mr. met him. Mr. PG is the mascot of Prince George, so. I've never been to Prince George. No. I've been close over like Vailmont snowmobiling and stuff and I've never actually come north from Kamloops or Cache Creek 
and uh, so this is kind of new territory for me and um, actually um, this area we're in now we camped near uh, Williams Lake last night just on an eye overlander spot on a lake which was pretty nice and uh, yeah this whole area from Williams Lake up has been really like probably the nicest part of BC I think even though we're not in the wow. mountains he to me he hasn't seen it all yet I've seen so, so far We had a pretty decent little eye overlander spot here just a couple kilometers off the highway we're a little bit north of williams lake we got a nice little spot on the lake here George. Good morning. So we pulled in uh, yesterday into my girlfriend's uh, place just outside of Prince George and today we're gonna take you on a little tour um, around the area where I grew up as well as through the city of Prince George. Um, I took Gord yesterday on a quick little toot about to show him the area where where I spent my childhood, um, which was is actually outside of the city, um, about half an hour, just a small little community. And he thought it would be a cute idea for me to take you on a little tour and explain to you how everything seems to have shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> Show you where I used to get into some trouble with my girlfriends and the big hills that now seem to be so big and the open fields that we used to play in that are now completely grown in by trees and things so um yeah so come along and i'll give you a little bit of insight as to who i am and where i'm from so this little community where i grew up there's a, it's one way in one way out and it's about four and a half kilometers from the highway back in the series of little dead end streets that go off and crescents and whatnot. And coming up here is my best friend in the whole wide world. We've known each other since we were four. And this was her grandma's house. So she's uh, down that way there. And she's near the highway. So, and my girlfriend Lana and I grew up on the farthest end of this road. We used to ride our bikes. It was always seemed like a great feat to go four kilometers <laughs> to go to grandma's. It was the heart and soul of everything for us. And uh, she always had cookies and great advice. Had the opportunity to see Grams yesterday while at Lana's house. She's 91 years young and still looks amazing. And as always, gave a great piece of advice to us to say, live fast and leave great memories i love you grams coming up here's the railway tracks my friends and i spent many many times good times walking the tracks getting into trouble this farm here oh goodness me our window is really dirty there's a farm here called racks farm it was a one of the original homesteads out here where we used to go and pick potatoes and raspberries and apples and things. Work off some of that youthful energy. This little intersection here is where we used to catch the school bus. When we were kids, we used to feel that it was miles and miles and miles. <laughs> Looking at it now, it's probably like, I don't know, what? 
from your house to from the my corner. House to the corner, half uh, a kilometer. Half a kilometer. <laughs> yeah. Not very far. That's a long way when your legs are little. So down this road is where my childhood house was. My grandparents had built the house right next door. Just in here. And then the house where I grew up. I'm not gonna show you the house um, as there is new owners there now and just to respect their privacy, but this is around the area where where my house was. Um, at the end of the road is a, used to be a tree nursery where both of my parents used to work. And partway down, this road used to be gravel when I was a kid. And partway down, there's a hill with a little pond on either side. And when we were kids, this hill was massive. And we'd start right about here and we would uh, take a run at it so that we could get up to the other side because it seemed so big. <laughs> but as you can see, it's not so big. <laughs> So when I was little, this was like the hill of the road. <laughs> it's almost flat, really. Ponds on either side. My, one of my big brothers, he used to build go-karts and things, and we used to bring them out here and test ride them down the hill because it seemed so big. And we were terrified that we'd lose control and fall in the water on either side because it was so big. But it's flat. <laughs> I guess I'm not this big anymore. So this is the tree nursery that is just up the road from where our house was. And both my parents used to work up here. My dad was one of the head growers up here and my mom took care of all the grounds and the, uh, and the buildings. And when I was little, you could see all of this sign. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it says Red Rock Research Station BC Forest Service, and there's a big cutout tree in there. But when my, uh, when my mom took care of this, these trees were of course quite a bit smaller and this whole grounds were little, uh, little trees and big flower beds. This was like her pride and joy up here. Looks a little neglected now. Uh, Pacific Regeneration and Technologies bought out this nursery uh, in the early 90s, I believe it was. It operated for a while and I'm not sure what they're doing with it now. It looks pretty closed, but there was this large office building over here. At one time, this place employed, I'd say probably at least a couple hundred people at, at uh, the time when we would harvest the seedlings. Oof. I'd say probably pushing upwards of 500 people. But it looks pretty neglected and shut down now. Obviously they're doing something. We came up here yesterday, the gate was locked. Today it's open, so there's something going on here. But it's sad to see it like this because once upon a time it was pretty nice. This road is where my girlfriend Lana grew up. Um, she was just around the corner from me. There's many, many of, uh, I'll meet you halfway kind of walks. We used to come down here, uh, all of us kids, me with my brothers, and believe it or not, at the end of this road, right here at this hill, there is a hill here. <laughs> you, you can't tell, but right here, we used to toboggan down there because it drops off like a lot. And my brothers used to dirt bike down there. There was lots of, uh, sprained ankles and bailed toboggan runs. It used to happen there. You would never know looking at it now with these great big trees everywhere. So in behind me here, there used to be a house here when I was little and it burnt down and there was no trees. It was all open. And all of us kids out here, there was most of us, we were all pretty much the same age. We'd get off the bus, we'd go home, we'd have our dinner and we'd all grab our baseball gloves and we'd come here and we would play ball. <laughs> You'd never know it now. Everything is so grown in, but yeah, once upon a time, there was nothing there but an old burnt out foundation and a big field. I feel really, really old. <laughs> So we're up here on Connaught Hill Park 
Um, in the middle of Prince George, there's there's a big, well, there's just a big hill. <laughs> um, and from the top of it, as you walk around the entire park, you can see when it's not super foggy, you can see all of town. So behind me right now, all of this area here is what's called uh, historic Old Fort George. Prince George um, came into existence in like 1806, I believe it was, um, part of the Hudson's Bay fur trade. Uh, it was an old fort town. Because this is where the rivers meet, uh, everything sort of funneled into here in the early 1900s, 1903, I think it was, something like that. Uh, the railway decided it was gonna come through here and Prince George started to boom. But this, all this area here, this is what was original. So next, we're gonna take you to the intersection of the two major highways that go, to, go through town and introduce you to Mr. Peachy. We had to take Jeep to car wash. It's pretty gross. It doesn't smell like bubble gum. Say hello to Mr. PG. I finally get to meet Mr. PG. Even though Marianne tells me it's not the original Mr. PG. It is not the original Mr. PG. The original Mr. PG was actually made out of wood. Um, he was built to symbolize the forest industry in Prince George. Prince George, I'm not sure if it still is, but it used to be known as the spruce capital uh, of BC. This new one, was, he was built in the 80s and he's made out of aluminum. And he is one of those things that you remember as a kid as being significantly bigger. Um, Mr. PG stands at 26 and a half, roughly-ish feet tall. And I remember him being absolutely massive. <laughs> so is this one the same size as the old one? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was just a lot smaller, apparently. But yeah, this is Mr. PG. Come say hello. They moved Mr. PG. He used to be across the street. When I was a kid, all of this behind me here was all forest. And there was a tourist information there at the junction of the, uh, of the highways. They've since put in a large casino and moved Mr. PG across the highway, still at the intersection of 97 and 16. But yeah, he's a little harder to get to, but still super cool. See there, there was an 11.6 meter tall one built for the parade float. 1961. But see this one's 8.13. So there was a bigger one at one point. And there was one that ended up in Scotland. A one meter high rendition. Mr. PG correction. He is not made out of aluminum made out of steel and fiberglass.
we just pulled in to our campsite, a uh, boondocking spot, uh, just outside of McBride, BC. Uh, it's like a um, BC Forest Rec Center, I think it's called. Um, so we're just getting ready to make some dinner. Check out my cooking view. Pretty nice view from my window. Like what the heck? And it's free! Tonight we're gonna have beef ravioli. Organic beef ravioli. And we're gonna fry up some onion and some green pepper and some organic mushrooms and this double smoked farmer sausage that's uh, made in BC. It's super yummy. So, and of course, it's all gonna get fried in butter because, yeah, it's yummy. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.